Well, hello and welcome everyone, and thank you for joining the Commonwealth Chamber Hong Kong webinar today, Hong Kong and Pakistan, Future Opportunities for Historical Partnership. I'm Julia Charlton, the current chair of the Commonwealth Chamber here in Hong Kong. As we all know, Pakistan and Hong Kong share deep cultural and commercial ties with each other. Current trade between the two stands at around 1.4 billion Hong Kong dollars per annum, which is steadily increasing through the Chinese transcontinental Belt and Road Initiative. To discuss and explain in detail the current commercial climate and opportunities in both trading and investment and between the two places, I'm very pleased to introduce you to our wonderful panel of heavyweight experts in their fields. Mr. Bilal Ahmad Butt, Consul General of, the pa of Pakistan in Hong Kong, Ms. Saira Somro, in-house counsel at Hutchison Ports in Pakistan, and Mr. Saeed Yudin, Chairman of Kiwi Trading Limited. Our moderator for today is Mr. Andrew Wells, who's the Secretary General of the Commonwealth Chamber of Commerce in Hong Kong. Just a tiny bit of housekeeping before we begin. This webinar will be approximately one hour long with a Q&A session following the panelists' presentations. Please feel free to share with us your questions in the Q&A section at any time during the webinar. Andrew. Thank you very much, Julia. Uh, many thanks to, uh, to our chairman, Julia, um, for her introduction to this extremely important event, opportunities for expanding business and investment between Pakistan and Hong Kong. Uh, my name is Andrew Wells, and as Julia said, I'm Secretary General of the Commonwealth Chamber of Commerce in Hong Kong. I'm delighted as moderator to have the honor to introduce briefly our three extremely distinguished speakers this afternoon. Uh, Mr. Bilal Ahmad is the Consul General of Pakistan in Hong Kong and Macau. His distinguished career in the Pakistani civil service has spanned a range of very senior positions, especially in the Punjab, where he was uh, Secretary for Information and Culture uh, before going on to being chief economist to the Pakistani government. Uh, Bilal is an old friend of the Commonwealth, and indeed we had the honor uh, only last week of having him introduce a seminar at our own chamber, focusing on Pakistani high-tech startups. And that's an area um, in which the Consul General is known to have particular interest and expertise. So welcome back, uh, Bilal. We look forward this afternoon to learning from you um, about the latest strategic, more strategic developments affecting Hong Kong, Pakistan, business and economic opportunities as we move into the post-COVID era. Uh, Mr. Saeed Uddin is, as Julia said, the chairman of Kiwin Trading Limited, which is a long-established textile business based here in Hong Kong, um, where he is regarded, I may say, as the doyen of the Pakistani business community. Um, we look forward to hearing from Saeed explaining to us how a company founded in the traditional sector like textiles has survived and flourished, in fact, by adopting innovation and inclusiveness. Saeed also is a strong supporter of Commonwealth values. He's a leading figure in the local Pakistani and Muslim community, and he was awarded, um, I'm happy to say, as an old friend, the Silver Bauhinia Star this year in recognition of his role as a pathfinder in Pakistan-Hong Kong economic relations. Ms. Saira Sumro, whom we're delighted to welcome, is a senior corporate lawyer based in Karachi, where she's worked for a number of major law firms, as well as international corporates. Uh, currently, she is the in-house counsel for Hutchison Ports, Pakistan. So she has a perspective from the other side, uh, as it were, uh, and therefore we particularly value her presence at today's webinar. She has a particular interest and expertise in the investment climate for FDI into Pakistan at present. And she tells me that in addition, she's looking forward to talking about the prospects in Pakistan for female entrepreneurs and professionals in particular. As a UK trained practitioner of common law, I look forward to her, um, also to hearing her views on how Pakistan and Hong Kong benefit from having in many ways similar or comparable legal systems. So a big welcome then to all our speakers. Uh, 
Before we begin, um, Judy has already spoken about housekeeping. Uh, I'll just add that if each of the speakers can be allotted, will be allotted up to uh, about a maximum of 10 minutes to make their presentations, and we will then uh, go to question and answers. And um, just to repeat uh, what Julia said, uh, any time during the proceedings, participants are encouraged to type in their questions um, and please also indicate to which speaker or speakers you would like them those questions to be addressed. Without further preliminaries, can I now invite Mr. Bilal Ahmad Bhatt to take the virtual floor? Thank you. Thank you very much, Andrew. Uh, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. Uh, at the onset, I would uh, extend my gratitude to Commonwealth Chamber for collaborating with the Consulate General of Pakistan in Hong Kong for arranging this webinar on very important subject of uh, expanding business and investment opportunities between Pakistan and Hong Kong. Then I would like to take this opportunity and talk about trade and business opportunities between Pakistan and Hong Kong. And later on, I will dilate upon the investment opportunities and potential in various sectors of Pakistan. Uh, as uh, you have rightly mentioned that the trade between Pakistan and Hong Kong is almost uh, 1 billion US dollars, but the balance of trade is tilted in favor of HKSAR. Currently, Pakistan exports are around 100 million US dollars and uh, Hong Kong exports to Pakistan are almost eight to 900 million US dollars per annum. Pakistani exports are dominated by agriculture-based products uh, and includes cotton, textile, and textile made up articles of apparel, leather, and leather products, meat offals, a little bit seafood, and surgical goods. Whereas Hong Kong exports are mainly consists of uh, capital goods, uh, textile machinery, electrical machinery, generator sets, boilers, cellular phones, plastic and rubber articles, and similar other items. Based on Hong Kong put market potential, Pakistan has great opportunity to have modest share in various sectors of the local market. First on the list of my potential products is meat and poultry. Uh, as we all know that consumption of uh, meat and poultry in Hong Kong is more than 3 billion US dollar annually. Uh, major countries which are exporting to Hong Kong market are uh, USA, Canada, UK, Australia, Brazil, New Zealand, mainland China and Thailand. Uh, fortunately, Pakistan has supply of quality beef and mutton and poultry and Pakistan exports almost 450 million US dollar annually to the different countries of the world. Consulate General of Pakistan, Hong Kong, initiated the process for approval, obtaining approval from the Food and Environmental Hygiene Department uh, during the last year. And uh, uh, luckily we are at the final stage of its approval. Once the approval would be granted, we are confident that we can have an adequate share uh, in the local market as Pakistani products are competitive in quality and price. Second product on my uh, list of potential exports to Hong Kong is seafood, including fin fish, crustaceans, and aquatic invertebrates. As we all know that uh, Hong Kong people are fond of seafood and annual consumption of seafood is more than 3 billion US dollars. Uh, before the pandemic, uh, there was large influx of uh, foreign tourists and almost 5 million people used to visit Hong Kong, which is uh, slightly less than its population. Major exporting nations are mainland China. Um, normally, these are the neighboring countries of Hong Kong, China, Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam, USA, UK, and France. Fortunately, Pakistan has ample uh, fishery resources, including uh, surimi, cuttlefish, squid, crabs, shrimps, salmon, and lobsters. These products can be exported either live or in the frozen farm. 
So Pakistan is already exporting some quantities of seafood to uh, Hong Kong. However, with focused market approach and connecting buyers from Hong Kong side with the suppliers from Pakistan, Pakistani products can find a way in the local market. So we are working in that direction and we are very optimistic that we can grab a substantial share in the local market. Uh, Pakistani exports in the textile sector mainly consists of cotton, textile, and textile made up apparels, including apparels. Uh, Pakistan, 65 to 70% exports of Pakistan to the other nations are cotton and textile based. Pakistan produces best quality of yarn, denim, bed linen, curtain cloths, socks, and hosiery items. Though Hong Kong market is either dominated by local brands sourcing from China, Vietnam, Cambodia, or Bangladesh, or on the other hand, there is a substantial presence of international high-end brands attracting local and visitors coming from mainly from mainland China and other neighboring countries. Despite the fact, I think that there is a scope of Pakistani products and we cannot underestimate it. By closely working with the local brands, we can find some niche in the local market so that they should uh, uh, they should source products from uh, uh, Pakistani manufacturers. Hong Kong meets needs of its uh, population by importing from other countries sides of fruits and vegetable market of Hong Kong is almost 5 billion US dollars. Major exporting nations are South Africa, New Zealand, China, Australia, Chile, USA, and Japan. Pakistani mangoes and citrus are not only rich in uh, taste and aroma, but, uh, but, are, but are also very competitive uh, in, 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 in quality and, and price. Uh, though Pakistan is exporting small quantities of mangoes and citrus to HK, which are mainly consumed by the uh, Pakistani and Indian community living in this part of the world, whoever right connections with the main chain stores are missing. As two thirds of uh, food consumed by Hong Kong population is supplied through the chain stores, therefore, unless and until our pro products will not be marketed through chain stores, we will not be able to have adequate share in the local market. Pakistani potatoes, onions, ginger, garlic, and other vegetables have potential to compete in the local market. Through engagement with the buyers and chain stores, trade ties between Pakistan and Hong Kong can be strengthened in the field of uh, supply of uh, agriculture products, in, uh, including fruits and vegetables. Then Hong Kong is one of the largest importer and exporters of diamonds, gems, uh, and other precious and semi-precious stones. Artificial jewelry market in Hong Kong is having a volume of uh, almost slightly below 500 million US dollars. And uh, import of ruby, emerald, sapphire, uh, that almost the, these stones, uh, its uh, import stand at... Uh, almost slightly below 100 million, 85 million US dollar annually. Pakistan produces excellent quality of gemstones, including ruby, sapphire, emerald, peridot, aquamarine, tourmaline. Unfortunately, exports of Pakistan in the gems and stone sector is much less than its potential. Therefore, through training of the artisans to produce customized products, for the local market in Hong Kong and arranging B2B meetings with Hong Kong buyers, I'm pretty confident that the buyers from Hong Kong can have access to Pakistani gems at a very competitive prices. Next product on my menu list is surgical goods. Pakistan is leading manufacturer of surgical instruments Though majority of producers are suppliers to the, to the international brands. We, we don't have big brands, but we, we are supplying at the back end. Pakistan global export of medical, surgical, and dental instruments stand at around 400 million US dollars, 
whereas uh, imports of hong kong in this sector are slightly below 1 billion us dollar uh, but the share of pakistan is uh, very minimal it is few hundred thousands only uh, so i think that there is a great potential of exports of uh, surgical instruments to this part of the world we i i'm pretty confident that through working closely with the health department of hong kong Uh, director of health and uh, other private sector uh, health care providers we can gain foothold in this market no next uh, uh, i will uh, talk about the investment opportunities uh, especially in the backdrop of backdrop of china pakistan economic corridor cpec as we all know that cpec is a flagship project of belt and road initiative mainland china committed an investment worth more than 60 billion us dollar uh, through the cpec initiative in the first phase energy and uh, road infrastructure product uh, projects have been developed and 10000 uh, megawatt electricity has been added to the national grid of pakistan and with the vast network of motorways connecting our southern part eastern western and eastern parts to the northern parts of pakistan and uh, uh, western province xinjiang province of mainland china uh, note in the second phase special economic zones uh, zones are being developed around along the cpec corridor to attract foreign investors government of pakistan has offered numerous incentives Uh, including exemption from duties on import of machinery and raw material for construction of uh, special economic zones or for establishment of uh, uh, enterprises in those uh, special economic zones then uh, we have provided uh, a tax holiday for next 10 years these are some of the incentives but we have uh, numerous incentives uh, available to the foreign investors uh, as pakistan has a population of 220 million people where 60% of population is below the age of 30 years so demand for consumer goods goods is also rising pakistan has introduced special incentives and policies for attracting foreign investment in automobile sector in mobile manufacturing mobile devices manufacturing sector and aviation sectors uh, land is being provided to the uh, foreign investors at concessional rates in special economic zones uh the people who are interested uh, to initiate greenfield projects uh then a joint venture opportunities also exist uh, in in the in the textile leather and iron and steel sectors uh, one very important aspect is that pakistan has gsp plus status with the european union so there are opportunities for the foreign investors to come and invest in pakistan to get benefits of greater market access of pakistan to european union <clears throat> uh pakistan is also rich in mineral resources and has abundance of unexploited deposits of iron copper lead zinc uh, bauxite and gold exploration and exploitation of these available resources needs skill and investment pakistan is open to all kind of investment proposals including joint ventures to exploit these resources last but not the least is the it and and it enabled services sector which is an area where collaboration can and investment with the foreign counterparts can yield substantial dividends pakistan exported around 3 billion us dollar it and it enabled services during the last year it services sector is doubling in size after every 4 years e commerce is expanding in pakistan though currently its size is not substantial and it is uh, uh, slightly below 2 billion us dollar but we expect its size to uh, grow exponentially as young population is more inclined towards e commerce business and products more than 7000 tech companies are doing business in pakistan these companies are providing myriad of services including 
BPO services, gaming and animation, mobile application, IT services, support services, artificial intelligence, blockchain, software development, and system integration. So these are few sectors which I have mentioned are very uh, lucrative for foreign investors. Uh, in the conclusion, I would say that Pakistan offers offers great opportunities for trade and investment due to its large population, youth bulge, and which is educated and skilled. Pakistan geography also provided a unique advantage as it can as it connects as Pakistan connects South Asia uh, with Central Asia and China. The government of Pakistan is also very keen to facilitate foreign investors as it is evident from the fact that Pakistan improved 39 positions in ease of doing business ranking in the last two years. Uh, at the end, I would congratulate Ms. Julia, Chairman of Commonwealth Chamber of Commerce, Hong Kong, Mr. Andrew, Secretary General Commer Commonwealth Chamber, Hong Kong, and their team for organizing this much needed event. I would also appreciate efforts of Mr. Ali Awan, Trade Development Officer of the Consulate for coordinating for the webinar. However, it may just be the beginning of the cooperation between Commonwealth Chamber and Consulate General of Pakistan, Hong Kong. I would be looking forward to participate and arrange such kind of joint events in future to deepen our friendship and enhance business and investment opportunities for entrepreneurs and investors from both sides. I would also like to thank you all the guests, panelists, participants. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Julie. Thank you very much indeed, Consul General, for that very upbeat presentation um, and for your offer of uh, future uh, cooperation. Uh, you addressed a lot of issues, which I'm sure we will come back to in questions and answer time. Um, but now, uh, timing being what it is, uh, can I please uh, turn to uh, Mr. Saeed Uddin and uh, hand over the, the virtual floor to him. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum and good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Commonwealth Chamber of Commerce, the chairperson, Ms. Julia Charlton and Mr. Andrew Wells, Secretary General of Chamber, providing me the opportunity to speak about Pakistan, Hong Kong, and the business connection between the two countries. I came to Hong Kong and established my import-export business in textiles. Kevin Trading Limited primarily focused on cotton yarn in the late 1970s. Hong Kong and Pakistan have a long history from 1970s to 90s, Hong Kong was the single biggest importer of cotton yarn and gray cloth from Pakistan. At that time, Hong Kong was the main source of producing denim cloth, which was newly introduced to the world for making jeans and other items. For that, Hong Kong needed reliable, regular supplier of cotton yarn. Pakistan has the capacity to produce open end yarn to meet the requirement of Hong Kong mills. During those period, Hong Kong has about 27 to 28 spinning mills and they require cotton to produce yarn. Pakistan had a surplus of cotton, which was very suitable to produce coarse count, open end yarn to make denim cloth. So Hong Kong mills used to import Pakistan cotton in a big way. And my company has the distinction to supply cotton as the sole agent of Cotton Export Corporation of Pakistan, which was the only authorized corporation to export cotton from Pakistan. So Pakistan used to also export finished leather, marble, medical equipment, fruit, like mango and kino, etc., to Hong Kong. Similarly, many items from Hong Kong that used to be imported and still are being exported to Pakistan, like electronics, watches, artificial jewelry. Now, the top exports from Hong Kong into Pakistan include broadcasting equipment, 
गैस टर्बाइन गैस टर्बाइंस स्क्रैप एटसेट्रा ऑटोमोबाइल मेडिकल इक्विपमेंट टेलीफोनिक इक्विपमेंट एंड टॉप एक्सपोर्ट्स फ्रॉम पाकिस्तान टू हांगकांग आर आईटी सी फूड फ्रूट एंड वेजिटेबल स्पेशली मैंगोज व्हिच आर वेरी पॉपुलर टेक्सटाइल मेडअप्स जेम्स एंड ज्वेलरी पाकिस्तान गिव्स एन आइडियल एटमॉस्फेयर फॉर बिग इन्वेस्टर्स फॉर देयर इन्वेस्टमेंट some of the big investors in pakistan board holdings samsung coca cola pepsi telenor zong 5g honda canon suzuki ibm nestle and now many chinese brands who have established manufacturing plants in pakistan especially in electronics like tv aircom and many other household items these groups show the trust large corporations have in investing in pakistan facts and figures in millions of us dollar you can see from the table that there has been quite a significant amount of trade exchanges between hong kong and pakistan with an upward trend in total total trade in 2020 alone the total amount of exports and imports was hong kong us dollar 5905 billion there is large community there is a large pakistani community live in hong kong engage in small and medium sized business who are significant contributors in trade between both countries recently the china chamber of commerce for imports and exports of textiles said i quote china is willing to strengthen investment cooperation with pakistan in the textile garment and is no industry china and pakistan are perfect partners and there is a lot can be done pakistan is one of the world's leading cotton producer ranking among the top 5 in terms of yield with cotton products accounting for 40% of its export special economic zones special economic zones are established in many countries as an economic policy tool for enhancing the acceptability and credibility of industrial transformation policies to attract foreign direct investment increase employment and to open up the economy under cpec projects government of pakistan is focusing to expand the global trade enhance government of pakistan plan to build special economic zones to attract the foreign trade direct trade investment create industrial clusters through the establishment of special economic zones currently there are four special economic zones approved by the government and under development and uh, will be soon started in this the benefit this in this uh, uh, special economic zones you may import machinery 100% duty free 5 years tax holidays 100% revenue to take back to your home country good transport station and cheap labor the closeness of the china pakistan friendship and their assistance to pakistan will allow these special economic zones to be successful Additionally there is good scope for joint ventures in the following sectors power textile and textile made up leather it real estate and construction for investment following sectors are very attractive hospitality real estate education medical overall hong kong has a huge potential as an export destination for pakistan due to its free trade policy and easy licensing procedure for international trade there is great potential for a stronger commercial connectivity between pakistan and hong kong hong kong is strategically located and acts as the best transport corridor and international gateway to mainland china thus placing it at an advantage thank you again all of you and uh, miss julie and mr wells for providing this opportunity thank you thank you very much indeed said for that extremely comprehensive
overview of the on the ground actual development historically of um, the business relations um, between Pakistan, uh, Hong Kong, and indeed uh, China more broadly. Um, can we now uh, invite uh, Saira to, um, to, to speak to us? Good afternoon, uh, Andrew, Julia, and the Honorable Council General, Saita. Uh, it's an honor to be a part of this panel. Thank you for including me. Uh, good afternoon to all the attendees here. Uh, there's a lot of ground which has already been covered by uh, the Honorable Council General and Said Saab, so I'm going to try not to uh, be repetitive where the content has already been covered, particularly given the constraints of time. Um, so I'm just going to share my presentation. I'll just give you a brief background on the geography and the history and the geographical location. And... Uh, certain other aspects which may not have been covered. Okay, so as uh, some of you may know, Pakistan uh, has a very ancient civilization. Um, an interesting fact is that uh, the uh, civilizations of Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa date back to uh, 5000 BC. And uh, what fact often gets missed is that this civilization was responsible for the invention of the wheel. Uh, since then, uh, it's always uh, been a very fertile land, attracting farmers and which has facilitated trade. We've got a river running through called the River Indus. Uh, it's uh, uh, largely an agricultural based uh, economy um, where uh, there's a lot of potential for agricultural development. Um, that's why infamous people such as Alexander the Great and the Arabs under Muhammad bin Qasim came and invaded this land. And uh, then the British, of course, as you know, uh, invaded United India and then the partition in 1947. So uh, the partition itself caused a, a certain setback with certain uh, industries going across to the border. But Pakistan has fared well since then. Um, it's got a booming population. The capital city is Islamabad. Uh, the city where I come from, which is the main industrial hub, is Karachi, with a population of 16 million. Um, and it's got a port. We're surrounded, as uh, the panelists have already mentioned, by Iran, China, and India. China and India being superpowers, so Pakistan being right next door attracts a lot of attention and importance because of its strategic location. Um, because of uh, its location uh, to um, the uh, Arabian Sea, right next to the Arabian Sea, uh, investors in Hong Kong, such as Hutchison, have invested in Karachi in two ports, which I'll come to later. Uh, the coastline is a little over 1,000 kilometers. The climate, given that it's all the way from the Arabian Sea to the from from the shores to the highest mountains such as K2, we've got a diverse terrain. That means that there's a there's ample opportunity for all kinds of uh, agriculture and uh, uh, tourism, which again I'll come to again later. The population is, as they've already mentioned, 220 million, uh, with 50%, uh, I mean, 65 million uh, are in the workforce. There's a lot of unemployment here, uh, hence a lot of employment opportunities which people are looking for. Uh, and uh, the language is Urdu locally, but English is widely spoken. It's the official language. Being a lawyer, I can mention that English is the official language in the court systems as well. So all our pleadings and all our arguments are done in English. We still are based on the Anglo-Saxon law, which is why I had to go to England to study. The laws are consistent. So there's, uh, it's easy to practice when you've got an English law degree here. I'll move on. So five reasons to invest in Pakistan. The headings say it all. I'm not going to go into tedious detail by reading it out, but the geostrategic location is something which uh, has already been mentioned. Uh, it's a gateway to Central Asia um, and the Gulf states, which is why uh, the shorelines have attracted uh, foreign investors to invest in ports. We've got 
a couple of ports in Karachi, including uh, the one I work for, which is South Asia Pakistan Terminals Limited. Um, and there's Gwadar, which is also being developed uh, for transshipment purposes. So there's a lot of potential for international trade. Currently, the external trade is about 3.6 million TEUs. There's a large potential for growth. It's very undervalued. The population and workforce, as I already mentioned, 55% of the population is below the age of 19, which means there's a potential for long-term um, long -term sustainable economic growth. Um, and most of them, as I already mentioned, are proficient in English. Uh, the literacy rate here is low because not enough investment has been made in the educational sector. The plus side is there's potential for investment in the education sector and in universities, um, which are uh, a demand here. The consumer market, as already mentioned by Said Sab and uh, the Honorable Council General, is growing at a very fast pace. The, econom the economic outlook is positive. The investment policy has been very friendly. It's very easy to invest in Pakistan. It's, a, it's got a very liberal foreign investment regime. Apart from five or six exceptions, um, all other sectors of the economy are open to foreign investment. The exceptions being, which I imagine most people wouldn't be interested in, are arms and ammunition, consumable alcohol, currency and mint, high explosives, radioactive substances, and security printing. Apart from these exceptions, uh, the world is your oyster. So there are no minimum uh, requirements for the investment. There are very few sectors where there's an upper limit, but for most, um, the environment is very friendly for investment. Um, and there are special economic zones, as has already been covered, for uh, facilitating a tax break and uh, import uh, uh, free machinery, uh, other economic benefits to facilitate investors uh, in, in coming here and exploring opportunities. Potential areas of investment, I, I, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but broadly speaking, and I think a lot of it has already been covered by our other two panelists, energy. As a resident of Pakistan, I can tell you there is not enough energy here. Uh, it's a lot better than it used to be when I was a child. Uh, with a lot of uh, load shedding. But now, because of uh, positive steps which have been taken by the government, there have been substantial improvements. Still, uh, according to WAPTA, which is uh, Pakistan Water and Power Development Authority, there's 60,000 megawatts of hydropower potential in the country, of which only 7,320 megawatts has been developed. Solar and wind project. Foreigners have been coming in and investing in this area, but it holds immense potential. Third, coal mining. Uh, uh, the province which I live in is Sindh. There are four provinces, five provinces in Pakistan. Uh, Sindh is the one which is closer to the, the shoreline. And uh, they've got their own investment department as well. So Thar coal uh, is... Uh, Another area which holds immense potential for investment, geologically surveyed figures of total deposits of coal are approximately 175 billion tons of coal and sin, equal to the total oil gas deposits of Kuwait and Saudi Arabia, according to a SIN Board of Investment report. The financial sector uh, holds a lot of potential as well. There are several uh, multinationals here as well, uh, which are uh, prevalent. Um, and they've all uh, had a good positive experience with the investment here. They've all grown and they've all come back for more. Large scale manufacturing, I think Said Saab is the expert here uh, regarding textiles and uh, he's already covered a large chunk of uh, the fabric, cotton and denim. Denim is a, is a large export ticket item here. Light engineering and electronics is uh, an undertapped market. So it's, uh, it, it's attracting a lot of investments, a lot of benefits are being given by the government to invest in this area. The blue economy, which is what I serve, uh, Hutchison Ports has invested in uh, 
a container terminal here back in 2000. By Karachi International Container Terminal was uh, the name of the company. It still exists. It's practicing. Because of the success of that company, they made a further uh, investment and developed another deep sea container terminal, the first of its kind in Pakistan, um, to uh, enhance transshipment trade. It became operational in 2017, so it's still fairly new. Uh, there's a concession term. Um, it's a public-private partnership between uh, the Port Authority and Hutchison, and it's been successful so far, but I'm not going to get too much into that because I'm not here on behalf of Hutchison, nor am I authorized to speak on their behalf. But there is being an uh, investment being made in the ports, even in Gwadar. Agriculture is a, is a booming economy here. It's a, again, a lot of people are coming in to get the perfect size potato and the perfect size tomato. We, th those areas are something which, uh, which are still being developed through uh, seed mutations. And there is, that is a large area of interest. Technology. I mean, I can't mention to you, there's, there's a lot of poverty and disparity in Pakistan, but every single person you meet will have a cell phone. You know, it's just, uh, it's, it's a necessity in this country and it's a, it's a very successful industry because of which e-commerce, fintech and digital platforms are, are uh, they, they, they're really doing well. And a lot of uh, youth are using, uh, because there's a large presence of youth in the market, uh, that's the target market. So there's a lot of potential there. CPEC has already been mentioned. They've uh, invested, uh, China has invested a large amount of uh, money and time in developing the infrastructure to, to facilitate uh, the road networks and mass transit projects. Education, universities uh, are the need of the hour, even schools, private schools, uh, each one which is uh, developed uh, does well um, because they're just not enough. There's so many youth and not enough colleges and universities to go to. Tourism has been the focus of the current government. They have uh, introduced many incentives to attract foreign investors, particularly in the northern areas where there's very green and there's skiing being introduced. There's beautiful, untouched, vast areas of green land. Um, and there's not enough hotels and entertainment there. So a lot of attention is being given. Four Seasons is also coming there. And I must recommend, that if you haven't visited Pakistan, you must make a trip up to the northern areas. It's just absolutely beautiful and just underrated and unexplored and untouched beauty. How do they help? So there's, there's two boards. One is the Board of Investment, which is going to be the go-to agency for, uh, of the government for most investors. To set up and incorporate a company, they have uh, facilitated, uh, they're, they're continuing to work on a one window solution where investors come in and uh, it's simple to incorporate a company. It takes anywhere between a month and a half, uh, which is a bit long, but uh, efforts are being made to reduce that timeline. The, to promote uh, investment uh, between the foreign and local businesses, efforts are being made by uh, the Board of Investments in, as well as the Board of Investment Pakistan. Um, it's... Um, I mean, I, I'm not going to read the slide, it's self-explanatory, but there's been a large amount of focus on the ease of doing business. That seems to be the tagline for this government. Um, and they are trying to, uh, they're open to suggestions, they're open to improvement, but uh, for now they have improved substantially and it's a lot easier to, uh, to come as a foreign investor. The Imran Khan government has been very friendly to... Uh, uh, attract foreign investment at the moment, uh, and uh, yes, so by to the existence of special economic zones. Since this, um, because I'm from Sindh, I have more data on that. There's uh, they're facilitating investors for setting up of special economic zones. That things that which are being uh, granted are ten year exemptions from income tax, which is huge. It's substantial. Um, if you developing zones. Uh, you, you get a one-time exemption from all custom duty, duties. Taxes on import of capital goods are being waived. Um, 
And as per the Board of uh, Investment Sins uh, information, there's availability of gas, electricity, water, and infrastructure as well to facilitate investment. Now I'll come on another topic, which is the reason for one of the reasons why I was invited on this panel is uh, because of my contribution uh, to the diversity of the workforce in Pakistan. There tends to be an impression of, uh, and, and I think bad media coverage sometimes because of uh, Islamization. Now you can see me, I've, uh, and there the are a lot of women, uh, the certain pictures up in front of you. Benazir Bhutto, I don't know if you've heard of her, but I think everyone who's familiar with Pakistan would have heard of her. She was the first uh, female prime minister of the Islamic world, which is no ordinary feat. Uh, Malala Yousafzai, despite uh, being victimized, emerged stronger and as a global figure and a leader for uh, girls' education. She's championed the course successfully all over the world. There's uh, Shermin Obed Chinoy. She's a two-time Oscar winner and, uh, and an Emmy Award winner as well. Asma Jahangir, she's, a, she, she's passed away now, unfortunately, God bless her soul. She was a leading human rights activist. There's potential for, for everybody here, for minorities, for females. I mean, I can't tell you the amount of females. I've been, I'm a head of legal myself in a global corporate but even in other industries from the film industry to education, to politics, to other corporates. I mean, you'll be, uh, it's, 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 uh, I'm proud to say that even the head of Musk and Unilever, Nestle, these are all global corporates. They have females at their helm as CEOs. In local corporates as well, you have uh, uh, confectionery uh, producers like EBM, United Bank Limited, uh, investment houses, uh, textile mills, you have Nishad Textile Mills with Naz Manshad at its helm. Sitting female judges, uh, even in fact, over the weekend, uh, uh, this lady was promoted uh, as a high court judge, someone in Piaz. And another one is uh, um, in waiting to be a Supreme Court judge in media houses, fashion houses, women are leading in various, uh, in various industries and in various spheres. So, um, you know, it's, it's a liberal uh, country and it's done well for itself. And we hope that uh, this humble presentation and small effort is going to go a long way in attracting investors from Hong Kong to Pakistan. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much indeed for that, Saira. Again, lots of questions. I particularly liked, if I may say, the historical contextualization at the beginning, which we often lose in business fora. Um, going to questions and answers, I'm conscious that there's very little time left. Um, we, we may um, be able to overrun a little bit, but let's get started. Uh, can I perhaps take moderator's privilege and um, direct the first question to um, perhaps to um, uh, to Syra in the first instance, but actually to, to any of the speakers, um, uh, how significant is the advantage to Hong Kong, Pakistan entrepreneurs um, of the shared common law system? And I have a question from, a, from a, um, one of the audience uh, along similar lines who adds, uh, especially in a Commonwealth context, is there, is there such an advantage? So to understand the law is fairly easy uh, for someone coming from the Commonwealth because uh, of the partition in 1947, both countries, India and Pakistan, inherited the Anglo-Saxon law. So the basis of contract and uh, trademarks and a lot of our uh, statutes still predate partition. We still rely on those statutes. And in fact, even for case law and precedent, we look at English law, uh, case law, we look at uh, Indian case law and other Commonwealth case laws where our laws are underdeveloped or there's not uh, a precedent post-partition. So even from, a, from a, a common law perspective, when we're looking at contracts, even if you don't know Pakistani law, I think it would be comfortable for someone from the Kasas, for someone coming from the Commonwealth to be familiar and rest assured that it's not to uh, deviant from the laws that they're already practicing. Thank you. Uh, 
if if I can also address perhaps um, a question now to um, the Consul General, um, you you touched on inevitably on on, on investment from um, from China as well as from Hong Kong. Uh, of course, we have our own perspective here, uh, although we're part of China. So my question is, you know, to what extent is the Hong Kong Pakistan nexus um, dependent? on or independent from the investment connections between Pakistan and mainland China. So, I mean, put into the language that SMEs might use here, I mean, do they, can they operate independently from Hong Kong or do they have to piggyback on mainland China uh, investment? So thank you, Andrew. Mm. Uh, as you know that uh, companies which are operating in Hong Kong, they are, uh, very much independent and they take their investment decisions independently and uh, the investment uh, which is coming from hong kong to pakistan uh, that is not much dependent on the mainland uh, companies or the uh, the policy of the government but of course uh, since uh, uh, hong kong is a part of china mainland china and uh, it's a special administrative region so uh, people have more confidence uh, due to the central government's approach towards Pakistan uh, that uh, their investments will be more protected, more secured, uh, uh, and when they when they are having more returns uh, from Pakistan, so they are you know obviously the backing of the mainland uh, central government definitely provides a bit. A, pretty much confidence to the companies who are coming and investing in, in, in Pakistan. But they take uh, their independent decisions and uh, they, they are coming to Pakistan on their own. So uh, there is not much connection in, in, in terms of policy between the central government and the HKSAR government policies. Thank you for that very important clarification. So we have our own uh, independent policies in that respect. Um, I have a question also for Saeed. Um, you spoke quite a bit about um, the different sectors of, of uh, Pakistan industry and investment, but how do you see um, uh, the way that the traditional Pakistan trade sectors like textiles will in coming years compete with or I don't want to say be replaced by, but how will they compare with the up and coming new sectors such as high tech, uh, fintech and so on, which uh, several of the panelists have mentioned? Do you see there being a, a change in balance between um, the, the, the older um, type of um, industry uh, and, the, and the more modern type, or do you see both coexisting? Thank you. You know that because of this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, there has been great impact of business everywhere in the world. So similarly to Hong Kong, and Hong Kong, you know, is a very strict rules and regulation, no traveling. Business cannot be done without you reach to the particular people by face-to-face -face doing However, there's a huge potential between Hong Kong and Pakistan in shipping and IT, e-commerce, m-commerce. Hong Kong can provide all these things to Pakistan and can invest there because Pakistan is a country of 22 million, 220 million people where these things can be easily uh, consumed by their local people also. And similarly, Hong Kong is one of the place where our textile was much more exported. The thing is that now there is a potential that Hong Kong people can go for IT, tourism, and hospitality. Tourism is now open to Hong Kong, uh, Pakistan is a very uh, rich country in tourism, which was not developed before, but now the government of Hong Pakistan is doing it. And there is a much needed potential to have good hotels, 
and restaurants and other things where there is a uh, last year for the first time we have received most uh, 40 to 50 percent more foreigners than before. The reason is that it is now open and roads are built there and easy to go and they have a beautiful place to see and very cheap in comparison to other countries in the world. Hong Kong, Pakistan is very cheap and they can enjoy uh, with a small thing. But apart from this, I think, of course, there is always a uh, lot of uh, things. The one thing more I want to mention here that Gawadar port has become a very deep port, uh, deep sea port in Pakistan for the first time and have great potential from West to connect China and Hong Kong to uh, China, especially to Central Asian countries. And Central Asian countries can bring all their uh, products and they can take from here. So this is a very important place to go. And now the free zones are built there and uh, many uh, opportunities are open. So I think there is a, always a room something to do it. Thank you, Saeed. Unfortunately, Andrew, I, I would like to add something. Please, Council General, as, yes. As very rightly pointed out, uh, uh, your, your, your question was, as you know that there is uh, more than one trillion US dollar uh, tax trial markets, including apparels. Pakistan at the lower end of the value addition. So there will be a shift uh, in the textile sector maybe in the coming years as we added uh, almost uh, 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 export potential of 6 billion US dollar during the current year to increase our exports of textile and textile made ups. So I think in future, uh, the, the, there may be a shift toward, more shift towards the apparel industry and we might be moving on the uh, on the higher end and, and, and on the and, and on the off the value chain and apparel industry might be you know uh, increasing in the years to come of course parallel we are uh, trying to diversify our exports we are trying to bring more investments in technology, in light engineering, uh, in hospitality sectors. But, uh, you know, currently our mainstay, since our 65 to 75% of exports are textile based. So I think there will be more investment and, and we will mo be moving on the higher end of the value chain. So there is potential and uh, it, I don't think that in, 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 in next 10 years, uh, uh, Pakistan will be, you know, uh, in, the, in the next 10, ten year, Pakistan will be will be moving upward in in this uh, particular sector, providing textile products to the world. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Um, I think that uh, we're almost at the end of our time here. Um, perhaps I just ask one final question for all panelists, since you've given so much of your effort and time for today. Uh, in just one sentence, if possible, maximum two, if you had to say what your um, hopeful prediction was for where Hong Kong, Pakistan economic relations would, would be in five years time, not 10 years time, what would it, how would you sum it up very quickly to end this uh, webinar? Can I start with Syrah? Next five years, I see um, between Hong between Hong Kong and Pakistan, we've always uh, enjoyed a very positive relationship, particularly as they've already covered the five areas. But I think the new areas which are attracting uh, interest globally, particularly from China, uh, given Hutchison's interest here as well, and DP World too, uh, it's the ports, because I think there's a long focus on even in logistics um, and um, uh, real development because this is all connects to uh, uh, really inland trade. You've already got the ports now, but now I think the focus should be on inland trade and developing that network. CPEC is already doing that. Uh, Hong Kong could add value to that as well. Uh, the mass transit systems. Uh, that, that I, I see a lot of growth in the next five years because the environment and the incentives being provided by the government uh, are, are good. Okay, Sarah, thank you. Sorry. My pleasure. My pleasure. <laughs> Saeed, very briefly. 
I just want to say one thing about textile. You know that Pakistan is one of the biggest producer of textile items and exporting. As I said in my speech, that China has shown interest to invest in textile industry. Now, Hong Kong has a great potential because the big big buyers used to come to Hong Kong. and they order send their orders through hong kong to uh, rest of the world including pakistan now pakistan can come here pakistani can come here obtain order and they take uh, because before it why this potential why so many business has been uh, grown between pakistan and Uh, hong kong in china because of that there this uh, trading houses are located in hong kong international trading houses and they used to uh, give their orders from here but unfortunately this has last 2 3 years uh, scenario has changed although the online the they are taking it but still there is a potential but what i say that hong kong people can invest in textile sector in pakistan because pakistan has growing slowly slowly more in textile than other trade okay thank you said i have to cut you short there that's very helpful summary um consul general the last word with you thank you andrew uh, i would say that uh, it is just the beginning uh, we are in the process of uh, negotiating an investment promotion and protection agreement with the special administrative region hk and uh, hachisan ports they are also they you know they are the pioneers in that sense they have made big investment in pakistan and i have requested them to speak their heart out during a session with the Ch- chinese general chamber of commerce uh so that you know people should listen to them what kind of business environment investment environment exists in pakistan and they should be very candid and we have a very candid discussion and they were very much optimistic they were having good returns and they were more optimistic about the future you know uh, when it is a chain reaction i would say that the things have started china pakistan economic corridor it has initiate it has uh, initiated a new era for business and investment in pakistan more of the chinese and hong kong companies will enter in pakistan market people will feel people will feel uh, you know more confident investing in pakistan no we are working a lot with the with the hong kong government its departments we are trying to you know uh, interact with the with the with the investors with the manufacturers cma cgcc and uh, apparel society and lot of other people and uh, i am pretty confident that in the years to come uh, uh, currently it is the second or third largest investor hong kong is the second or third sometimes third sometimes second largest investor in pakistan but i am confident that in in future we will be having more of more investment from hong kong once there will be success stories those will be relieved uh, revealed to the uh, to the local investors and uh, i believe you me that we have uh, we have very high returns uh returns on equities in in terms of investment in pakistan so whoever will come to pakistan they will they will bring more investment and you know so so i'm i'm pretty confident that it will be uh, the future will be very good thank you excellent thank you cg um uh, distinguished uh, speakers and uh, participants in the interest of time um i unfortunately will have to draw the webinar to a close for people whose questions haven't been answered including me um because of time um i think it will be acceptable if you put them to the speakers or perhaps if they're general questions to the cg's office and he can direct them uh, or his staff can direct them um, appropriately uh, there was so much touched on and i agree with the cg that um, there are there is room for uh, future um webinars uh, on all sort of events on on to take this further um I I personally think that uh post covid the opportunities will become even clearer and 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 more manifest uh, 
for us to take advantage to build on the historical Commonwealth relationship, Hong Kong, Pakistan, and also Hong Kong, uh, sorry, also Pakistan's uh, strategic geographic uh, location. So thanks again to everybody for signing up. Please do keep an eye on our website for future events. There are several coming up in January and February. And please do also let us know uh, if you have other subjects related to Commonwealth, to Pakistan, or to anything that falls within our purview that you'd like us to address. Finally, can I now hand the floor back to our chairman, Julia Charlton, for her concluding remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andrew. Thank you, Andrew Wells, for being such a great moderator. And that's more or less the conclusion of the webinar. Thank you all so much for being with us today. And many thanks to our amazing panelists. There's just so much to take away from what we've been hearing. It's been great to hear about Pakistan's enormous production capabilities and resources from Consul General Butt and the huge potential for the tech sector, which I'm particularly enthusiastic about. And also the mangoes and the gemstones sound particularly good to me. Um, Sa Saeed's information on the two-way trade between Pakistan and Hong Kong is fascinating and you know the, the further ways of developing that, as well as um, the, his, his mentioning, which I think Sarah also mentioned, the wonderful tourism industry. And I think another webinar is perhaps about the enormous potential of Pakistan's tourism industry. And Sarah also reminded us about the prominence of um, senior women in government, law, industry in Pakistan, and also about the all-important internal trade and the importance of common law um, in, in view of the ease of doing business both in Pakistan and with Pakistan from other countries, and in particular from Commonwealth countries. Well, your views matter to us. So before leaving, please, could you kindly complete the evaluation form that's linked in the chat box? Once you click the link, please scan the QR code and you'll be able to use it. At the same time, um, if you'd like to join the Commonwealth Chamber of Commerce, um, please tick the box option. We look forward to seeing you again at another webinar or event. Thank you all very much. Bye.